Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Country Living series by Curly Zag. Today we want to talk all things seeding and transplanting, how we get our seedlings started, how we get our transplants started, and get them into the ground. So uh, if this is something that's interests you, stay on board and we'll get into it very soon. So we've got a big uh, show ahead today and um, we want to talk about uh, seeding and transplanting. First thing we're going to talk about is the transplanting. So we use our paper pot planters and that's the only thing we're going to touch on. We do also do plugs, um, like here we've got the um, zucchinis coming out, but um, that's fairly straightforward, just seed them, put them in my hand, whatever. But 90% of our transplanting is done with the paper pot planter. So for those of you that don't know, Curly's Ag used to be known as Paper Pot Planter Australia and that was because that was our first thing that we developed, the first thing that we, we got into. Um, since then we've, we've broadened our horizon a lot. Transplanting for us when we started farming was the biggest killer. Um, there's no way of doing it uh, automatically unless you go into really broad acre stuff. And when we saw the transplanter come out, the, the Japanese have usually developed it originally. Um, we really liked it, we brought one out of Japan. <coughs> And um, you weren't really happy with it, it just didn't plant very well in our soil conditions. So we, we spoke to the Japanese, you know, there's no one distributed in Australia at the time, so we thought if we could distribute it, whatever, um, can you make some updates, whatever, nothing. So we got into it and developed our own transplanter, and um, we still buy the paper pots of, J of Japan, so that's just a full disclosure as to where we are. But we still use the paper pot planter and we love it. <coughs> um, and and yeah, so we're going to get into the transplant now. Uh, first thing first will be the seeding part of transplanting. Let's go and check it out. Uh, this is our seeding station. So um, we've got everything set up here. A bit of workflow in, 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 in thought here when we're setting this up. So basically, it doesn't really matter how you have your setup, but uh, as long as you know where it is and it makes sense to you. So the way we've got this set up here is we've got our soil underneath our seeding bench. So if anything comes off the seeding bench, it drops back into the bucket and we've not got mess everywhere. Um, I bring my trays that we're going to use and I sit them over here on this stool. Uh, paper pots are down here. I've got my three sizes and then I've got my, um, my dibbler and seeding blanks and stuff sitting there. So And the seeds, we're going to plant these, these couple here. I've already got one done. So we'll plant them today. So I'll sit you over the side and we'll get one started. Okay, first thing first is we're gonna do, uh, what are we gonna set up? Um, we'll do cabbage first. So I need a 150 mil pot, so that's it here. Opening rods. So they've got little arrows on the bottom here or the writing right way up. You need to make sure that goes towards the bottom when you're doing it, which will be upside down eventually. So slip one of our opening rods in one side and the other opening rod in the other side. Then we can open that up. Don't be scared. You've got to grab these things right on the tips, as close to the center, center as possible, and it makes it easier on yourself. So stretch them open really wide. The thicker the paper, the harder it is. So the 150 mil ones are the hardest, but they will just hook on push a um, bit down, hand down pressure on there and just pull your opening rods out. Once you got that out, this is where you grab your tray. Um, so your tray, like I said before, sits in there on all four corners, just makes it sit, sure it sits in properly. And then you can flick that upside down. Now you know that you're held in the right place. It hasn't moved or anything because your sides lock in there. Okay. Now it's on there, I just get my hand and I push this down to make sure it's down tight to the bottom. Now we want soil. So the soil's underneath the bottom here, I'll just get this pot and get a pot full of soil. Chuck that back under there and like I said, if anything comes falls through here, it'll just go back down into the bucket down the bottom. Mm-hmm. 
carefully. So you just want to make sure it's all fairly firm on there. And then just wipe the excess off the top. And like I said, I'm just flicking it off. And the bucket's down there where all the soil's held, so that's fine. Now next thing is the dibbler. So the dibbler has got a little little spikes on it for dibbling, obviously. And what I do, the, because our thing lines up fairly neatly on the sides there, I just sit in as best as I can, and I just give it a little shake, just, and you'll find it'll find its own hole, and then give it a firm press, done. So that's 264 of them um, dibbled, ready to, ready to seed now. I'll just sit him back up here, out of the way. Now, because we're doing cabbage, we want to do every second hole. So we've already got set up in here, but you can see that this here, these holes here are missing. So what that means effectively is that when we go to seed, um, we've designed it in such a fashion that that's every second that we're missing. It not looks like it's missing two and then planning to, but it's not the case. Um, so we actually are the first one to, to design this that I know of. And you just get your heap of seed. I've got my seed over here. I'll just sit him here so you can see. Uh, it doesn't matter how much you put on, the more the merrier, really. I mean, there's, there's a point where it's too far, but, you know, this here contains 10,000 seeds. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Um, but you can put in, like, a heap of them, and then you just shake them around like that. And... Then once that's done, you just shake the rest of the bottom, and you can see on here, I don't know if you can see on here, um, there's one seed in each hole, pretty well perfectly. Now, cabbage is a really tenacious sort of a plant, so it'll strike really easily. Now, the most important thing when it actually comes to seeding is lining up your corners. Now, you have to make sure that your, your room's well lighted so you can line them up properly, but you line up your corners, and then that'll drop straight into the right place. So I'll just make sure we're lined up on that corner and this corner. Okay, and then you just press the little slide in the back here where my hand is, and that just lets them all fall in. Just give them a little tap in case any seeds are just held up in there. There was a couple. They've all fallen through now. Once that's done, you've got a stack of seed left in here, as you can see. Just shake it to the bottom corner. And you can open your packet up and then just put them back in again. So there's no wastage of seeds. Um, they're all back in the packet and good to go. So we're done our cabbage. I'll chuck that back in our seed box. Um, I see, you can't really see, but there is, there's one hole in each seed. So last thing we're gonna do is just um, pat the top of it over. You wanna be careful if you see any seeds sitting on top, you don't wanna roll them, because you can roll them into the next cell, and that's one thing you don't wanna do. So we're just gonna go across like that. They're done. Now once that full process is completed, you just wanna put your hand down on, on the paper pots, just firmly, and lift off your fingers and they will now stay in place. I'll sit this one back out of the way over here. Ready for the next thing, and that's done. What I'll do now is I'll put him over here. We've got our, we've got our stand over here. And then from here, I'll take them all over into the fridge and that's where we'll do it. So we'll see a couple more. and you guys can watch how it's done. So we need to do more seeding, but we'll probably do it next week or I don't know when. Um, but we wanted to get these in as soon as we could. We're just, we're just a bit behind on them. So 
Thought I'd do this video with them ones. Uh, we'll take them outside now and we'll chuck them in the nursery, turn the irrigation on and let it get a bit of moisture in it. Okay, so irrigation's done. Now, for germination, we've got these old Coca-Cola fridges. Um, that one actually works. We use that for refrigerating. But I got the two of them in an auction for like $10. Nobody wants old Coca-Cola fridges. Um, but all you need is somewhere that's gonna maintain the temperature and keep it humid. So, fridge is perfect. They're not, this one here, doesn't, like I said, doesn't work. Uh, it's not turned on. And all we do is we, we pack them in the fridge and leave them there. Do that. And just like that, they're done. So they'll stay in there for three to five days, depending on what they are and how long it takes for them to germinate. And then just before they poke their head above the ground, uh, or when they just poke their head above the ground, uh, we'll pull them out, stick them back in the nursery. Now, you need to be super, super careful that they don't get too long and lanky because that's um, really bad for the establishment of the trees, uh, plants, especially when they get in the ground. Okay, so here we go. A couple of days later, we've got our fridge. And how's that for germination? I think this is our Salanova. You can see it's all come up really nicely. Again, the fridge is turned off. Well, we've got a couple down here. They come out. So these probably should have come out yesterday. The problem is that they grow so quickly once they come out that you have to get on the ball. So we'll take these all out of the fridge and chuck them all out on the nursery. The only ones I'll leave in there will be the Paragon onions because they can take up to a week to germinate. So these have been um, three or four days in there and they're, um, they're done. So all your brassicas, your lettuce, your um, bok choys and pak choys and them sort of things, super fast. The onions, your parsley and uh, capsicums and, and tomatoes obviously are killers they can take carrots as well, they can take well over a week to germinate. I've seen capsicums take two to three weeks to germinate, depending on the time of year. So apart from that, we'll get everything else out and we'll jam it all out there on the nursery. All right, so there we have them. Um, it's not my ideal spot to put the seedlings. I'd rather put them over on this bench over here <coughs> because it gets more sunlight. So the sun comes up that way <coughs> and it goes down over here. So it's got a bit of a wall here to, to, to take a bit of sunlight out of it. But you can see the sunlight's already coming on that corner there and they'll all have full sun very soon. It's important to get um, your seedlings hardened. Um, these ones here probably don't need to be hardened yet. Typically they'll go uh, two or three days, maybe a week you know, with a bit of shade and then they'll get put in full sun to make sure they're hardened up before they go to the field, otherwise they get out to the field and they'll be um, they'll just droop over and have transplant shock from the uh, difference in conditions. Alright, so it's been two weeks since we took them seedlings out of the fridge now. Um, we, had to, we did a couple more as I mentioned to you than we videoed, but anyway, here they are in front of us. <laughs> we've got, um, you can see they've all got their cotyledons uh, leaves only still. They don't have any of their third leaves coming out. Uh, like I mentioned, you really want to make sure you get them out early enough. We've left these a little bit long, as I mentioned, and they're, they're a bit lanky. I believe they're cabbage by the looks of them. They're a brassica of some variety. And it's not that bad, but if they get much longer than that, it, it can be really detrimental to their health. You can see over here on the lettuce as well. Lettuce are probably a little bit worse. You see we have some really long ones that we don't really want that. We want short ones, so short and stocky, so they're strong. So when we go out to the field, they have um, they have plenty of strength. And you can see we're, we're here open to the full sunlight. And um, these here will be, will be nice and hardened for when we put them in the field. 
So looking at the weather forecast, we've got a low front um, coming through this week. Now that means for us, um, it may be another week after that till the soil dries out enough to transplant. So I'm actually gonna transplant these seedlings here. Um, probably not lettuce, but I'm gonna do these brassicas. Because the beauty of paper pots, unlike your normal plugs, we have to wait for them to be root bound to a certain extent to, to get them out so that all the soil don't fall off. You can pretty well transplant these before germination even. I mean, the idea is that the longer that they are in there for, to a certain extent, they'll get that soil nicely held. But then if they're in there too long, they will get stunted growth. So I can actually show you some. We're gonna plant these today. So these are parsley. They should have been out like a month ago. So these have probably been sitting in paper pots for like two months. They're really, really stunted growth. Um, yeah, I probably won't even plant them out, I'll be honest with you. They're just not worth it because they're going to be that far behind. Um, but we're going to, you know, even these onions here can go out now. The idea, the main idea of transplanting, well, there's two main ideas, is number one, to get your germination. You know, you can have them in a controlled environment. Well, three actually now, think about it. So you have them in a controlled environment, you get a really good transplant rate, um, sorry, strike rate. And then secondly, <coughs> Um, you beat your weeds, so your, your transplants are already, you know, typically three to four weeks old, even up to six weeks old, being your onions you can be. If we transplant them, that means that they're, you know, six weeks older than, than the seeds because you can prep that bed that same day and then transplant straight into it. So, you know, they've got a head start on them weeds and they can, you know, you, you weed them once or twice and then the canopy goes over and chokes out the weeds. And number three, money. Um, now, if you calculate your plot, and I want to do a video on this, um, detail on how we calculate our value per plot and how we decide what we plant. Um, and your plot, you know, let's say each bed, uh, ours are 25 meters, is worth to me $50 a week. Well, if I've got that bed occupied by a set of seeds that are taking six weeks, you've got to factor that into it. So that's, that means that crop's going to be that six weeks by 50. That's an extra $300 out of the crop you need. Whereas if you can put the, the product into <coughs> the bed and it's and, it, and we're six weeks left in that bed, less in that bed, and it's really, you know, here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten trays in that little space, which is, you know, let's say two meters by by uh, 600, you know, that's, will translate out there to, um, you know, four beds, which which we would be using time on. So, uh, they're your main three factors. So, the other, so the thing with it, we've got this slow front coming through, as I mentioned, we can get this out straight away. And that's what we're gonna do with these because we wanna make the most of it. The rain is also good. I always like to try and get my seedlings in just, just before rain, if I can, if possible. Um, and, in this, and in this case, it is possible because if you get a storm, that, that electricity splits the nitrogen, so from the N2, which it, it, it normally is in nature, it's its, it's just normal state, <coughs> the nitrogen gets split off, um, typically just free, sometimes it uh, combines with oxygen, but yeah, that's a whole other story. And then when that comes down in the rain into the soil, it gives it a big nitrogen hit, and you'll always see after, after a thunderstorm, everything grows better. It's because of that hit of nitrogen it gets. Um, <coughs> so we're gonna get these out today. So I'll grab a hold of them and I'll go out to the field. Okay, so here we got our transplanter out. <clears throat> this is our CP1 Pro, um, Curly's Planter 1 Pro. Uh, this is the latest model. We're actually currently out of stock as of the date of doing this video. Um, just been, yeah, just been run off our feet with, with um, heap of different stuff. So we are working on it. But um, yeah, it's definitely my favorite planter on the market. Um, I've, tried, I've tried all the other ones. But anyway, I mean, that might be biased. Secret to our planner, so we've got our interchangeable nose on the front. I've got the spike nose on this one right now. The boat nose is is good, especially if you've got trash in your soil. Um, but we haven't. It's a fairly clean bed we've got here, so so the spike nose is just easier in that aspect. You want to set your your depth as low as you can on your wheel, and you want um, your handle as long as possible. That's my little girl over there. Anyway. So the most important thing with our transplanter, which is the only thing, we're the only ones that have it, is you can you can vary the depth. So on the back here, you've got uh, two wing bolts and wing nuts, and you can move that up and down to vary how deep you want to plant them. Um, and the other thing is we've got this wing bolt, so you can change really easily the how far open you have your, your feet. But my personal preference is deep and wide. 
So you want to have um, this here as high as possible, so it plants as deep as possible, and these here as wide as possible, so it doesn't cover it in as much. And as time goes on, though it may not cover it the whole way back in and, and drown your plant, which you don't want, it's down deep. So it shades it a little bit from the elements, and that water keeps that humidity in there, which is what you want. And if you want later on, you can always heal that back up um, whenever you want. So you get your paper pot. These are um, bok choy we're planting. Take your white bit off. And as you pull that off, I just sit it in the side here. The reason why I made these fairly wide is with the boat nose, you need weight to push it down so you fill up full of soil. But you just pull them out like that. And you see the roots are just starting to come through the bottom. Here comes my little helper. Ariana, can we, Mama? And then you grab a hold of your handle. A beauty of our handle is it's hollow, so you can put this bar through that comes with it, and you can pull it back. So you notice there, I didn't actually stake it in the ground. You start pulling, and I'll start feeding in. And you can see here, with these pak choy here particularly, they're not covered in really well. You can see how they're, they're a fair bit below the soil level, so as it irrigates over the next, you know, the course of the life, you know, next six to eight weeks, that will um, go down there, but it keeps it nice and sheltered from the, from the wind. Between the two beds behind me and this bed over here, we planted um, over 1,500 seedlings in the space of, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes max. This here really comes down to your bottom line and efficiencies and, and, and profitabilities for a small scale farm. So for us, like I said before, it's been a real game changer. So I know that I said that I had um, I was going to do seeding today. We have done seeding in the previous in previous videos with the with the handy and the um, and the yangs, but um, I'm going to put on next week's video because we're just pushing out too much with what we're doing with the transplanting. It's, it's it is a full video in itself. I was hoping of itself. I was hoping to get them all in the one, but it hasn't happened. Um, I want to spend next week. We'll, we'll go over that and we'll go over a bit of a list of why we transplant certain things and while we direct seed other certain things and we'll chuck it in that video as well so um thanks for watching to the end guys don't forget to like and subscribe hit that bell button down there somewhere and um, then you get notifications for every time we upload a new video otherwise thanks for watching and we'll see you same time again next week Bye.